If you're like me, a golfer, you've spent January in golfing hell, watching the snow come, the cold weather come, but February teases you a little bit. We're early February and we're 50 degrees. We know the good days are coming. So I had to ask myself, what could golfers do? What questions would they ask to get ready for the golf season. And I went to the expert. Eric, how about introduce yourself to everybody and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, I'm Eric Buffet. I'm the KI golf guy. So I work down here at Blue Heron Golf Course. And you keep Blue Heron going straight, which is great. Eric, look at, let me ask you a couple. I asked a couple of my friends. I said, look at, what would you like to know to get you ready for more regular play in March and April, et cetera? The biggest question comes up. Well, Fred, you know, every time I go to a pro shop, I never, I check my bag and I don't have any tees. How do I look at all the bags? There's tees, that size, there's tees. How do I pick a golfing tee and why would there be an lo extra long one and a short one? Help me out. All right, well generally what you want to do is, uh, I brought a little demo right here for you, Fred. Great. Um, so basically when you're teeing off with your driver here, what I would recommend is you take about half the golf ball and tee it up so it's about half the size of the top of the driver. Okay, so you cut it in half mentally. That okay. way, if you hit the ground, you still hit a lot of ball. Okay. And if you sweep it off the tee like you're supposed oh, to, good rule. that's okay. good. Now, some people like to tee a little higher. That's why they use a, a longer tee. Longer tee. But as you get playing, you get a feel for you know, what size you want. Okay. The shorter tees, you would use an iron or something, or okay. you can use a broken tee with an iron. Um, okay, so the idea is you want half the ball above the club, so to speak, and the head of the club. Yeah, that's what I recommend to, to start, okay. and then you can kind of play with it from there. Um, somebody asked Jack Nicholas once why he teed the ball so high, and he said because air has less resistance than dirt. <laughs> so, <he> said, <laughs> Especially for golfers <laughs> like me. <laughs> so he, said he, you know, he teed high, hit it, hit it high, but um, to start off, you go there. You, okay. know, you don't want to tee it up so high that you go underneath the ball. So that's a good rule of thumb, yeah. about half the ball to the head of the club. That's Very right. good. Yep. Now, staying with tees just for a second, Eric, a lot of my partners now have these plastic tees. Is there any advantage for the, pla you know, you, it's a plastic, or it seem, mm. all seem to be orange. An orange plastic tee versus a wood tee. Any advantage, disadvantage? Well, they don't break. Okay, <laughs> but there's no, it doesn't help you. The tees aren't expensive, but um, the pl plastic tees are a little bit harder on the mowers on the golf course, so oh. if you don't pick up your tee, you leave it later there, right. and the real mowers hit those. And so kind of stay with them, the wood, so. right? Stay with the wood helps. So, so okay. yeah, there's, there's wood, there's biodegradable tees out there okay. if you want to get fancy. They're all good, whatever they're all going to you know, okay. you know, degrade eventually. All right. Now, here's another question, and especially a senior golfer has come. When we go to, let's, let's say, Blue Heron, I know it's, we're going to the first hole. Where should someone over 60, over 70, male, female, what tee box should they use and why? I mean, are there rules or regulations, or is it just custom and tradition? No, uh, the PGA put out a list several years ago called Tee at Ford. Okay. Um, it gives you a recommendation on how far you hit your driver and then figure out your tee box from there. Okay. Um, I do have a, a sheet in the pro shop that tells you if you hit you know, your driver this far, you should play a golf course from this distance. But what I recommend is make it fun. Okay. So, you know, a par four, you're supposed to be able to hit the ball in two shots or hit the green in two green shots. Green in two shots. Um, so don't play so far back that you're hitting driver, three wood, wedge into, you know, par fours. You know, you want to okay. be able to hit your driver. And so you use kind of common sense iron. based on your golf game. Right. I mean, am I breaking any rules? I'm 75 or will be 75 in six weeks. Uh, people are betting against me for 75 years. <laughs> anyway, is there anything wrong with a senior my age playing from the women's tee? Is that bad etiquette? Or uh, we don't call them women's tees. Okay, what do we it's, call them now? So it's forward, middle, and back. Okay. So, you know, the forward tees are for seniors, uh, ladies, if they want. Some ladies play the middle tees. Okay. Uh, juniors. So, like I said, it's, it's based on driver distance and um, your, your game playability. and enjoyment. Okay. So, if you want to be able to hit the ball good for you and get to the green and regulation on a on a regulation, you know, par four, right, par three, right. whatever it might be, um, to make it fun. Okay. So if it's you hit the ball game. good, you're rewarded. You make okay. your par and you go okay. on. So there's nothing so. wrong with me from hitting from that forward tee. Right, I'm not right. I'm not breaking anybody's etiquette or etiquette or PGA is not going to take away my <laughs> pro tour card or anything. No, okay. I mean they build they started building these golf courses super long. Um, okay. You know it's based on the PGA tour guys are hitting. Oh, and the they ball, hit the ball a mile. 320, 350 yards, uh, but. You know, for the average golfer that's playing that golf course, that whole part of the golf course is wasted. I don't know why they bother mowing it. You know? <laughs> okay. No one's going to step back and play par fours that are 500 and, 
you know, 30 yards. Oh, I know. Or, you know, that uh, so, used to be a par five when I was. Okay, you know. so tee box is your choice on good common sense, how far you think you're driving the ball, and golf's a fun game, so have some fun. No sense hitting it from the championship tees if you know it's going to ruin your afternoon, right? Yeah, right. So I may post that. I have a little uh, spreadsheet that shows you how oh, great. far you should play and okay. then how to figure out how far your clubs go for, based off your driver. So you can figure out if I hit driver from this distance, then I can I hit play eight iron team. in. Oh, good, that'd be a big help. Okay. And, um, Eric, let me ask you this. Now we're getting to the point where early we, early February, we're beginning to see a 50 degree day, a 40 degree day, a 20 day. We're beginning to see us golfers a little twinkle in our eye. We can start <laughs> coming again. If they want to contact you, what's the best thing to do on a day like today? It's a great day. It's a little windy, a little muddy. Do you like people to call you, go to the website? What's the best way to find it? What's Blue Heron up to today? Well, they can call. I usually try to update the um, voice message every day, okay. let you know what's going on. So um, just call. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can go to the website. Usually the website stuff I'll do for an extended period. So if we're doing right. um, course maintenance or something like that, we'll say we'll be closed for this week. But the daily update, it's easier for me just to, to get on the uh, Now, voicemail. what number do they call? It's 410-643-5721. All right, 643-5721. I've heard you record a message, which is very good. And so, I'm, I'm screaming at you, Eric, can I play? <laughs> Shut up, Fred, and listen to the message, yeah. okay? And if you use common sense, like today, it's raining, and we just got done with a couple inches of snow. So it's if your yard muddy. is muddy, the golf yeah. course is muddy, and we probably don't want you out there. Um, there are still, walked around today, there's still snow in a lot of spots in the shade. Okay. Um, some of the greens have snow on them. So don't come down, play. if you can't walk in your backyard safely and easily, <laughs> don't come down and ask if you can play some golf. Right. right. That makes sense. Eric, one of the things, you have a wonderful pro shop here. Now, if people say, well, look, at I need, or what can you get in the pro shop when you're, you know, when you're up to full steam here? Uh, the pro shop, we carry you know, all your basic golf accessories, so balls, gloves, tees, hats. We do some shirts, some outerwear, uh, socks, um, just your basic general needs. Anything you need to play around the golf, right? right? I don't carry clubs because most people want to get fitted. If you're going to spend that kind of money, um, you should really go somewhere and hit a couple of different styles and then see what you like. But I do have accounts with, you know, Callaway, Titleist. Um, okay. Now, will they come Callaway. here or can they... If someone says to you, Eric, I want to get some Callaways, can it be done through this building or Absolutely, not? yeah, oh, we okay. can order them here. And, um, oh, okay. I can give you some suggestions or where to go to hit some before you, before you do it. Uh, you can go online and look at, there's club fitting demo days at different golf courses. Oh, great. Um, so we may try to get one down here as well. Um, and all that information is available for you or your, from you or your staff. Just ask, right? Yeah, just, just call up and ask for me, yeah. and I can give you a heads up on what I know. Hey, Hen, I'm going to be 75 in six <laughs> weeks. Some new Callaways, Eric can get them. Okay, all right. all right. Eric, speaking of golf clubs, I, every time I watch the Golf Channel, they have these nice, cushy, padded little grips now. They have the different colored grips. I was watching a college game the other day. They had Texas Longhorns on the grips. <laughs> When should a person replace their grips? Is there any grip an older person should use as opposed to a younger person? Give me the guidelines on grips. Well, you start off by going by hand size. Okay. For one. Okay, so if you have large hands, you'll want to go with a bigger grip. We actually have some grips in here to show you. So um, this one here is a, a jumbo grip, so it's a lot fatter, you know, for okay. your hands. Also, people with arthritis. So older people... Is that, that a, have a, a, for seniors like myself, would that be the good... Grip? If you have arthritis, yes. Okay, arthritis. Um, okay. You would go to something like that, or if you have large hands, okay? The, um, they make them in really four different sizes. So you get undersize, standard size, midsize, and okay. oversize. Um, so it just depends on your hand size and what you're looking for. The fat ones feel really comfortable to everybody. But what happens is it does slow down your club head a little bit. Okay. Uh, the closing of the club face. Well, so you have a tendency to hit more of a fade. Okay. If you already hit a fade and you get a fatter grip, you're going to hit a more of a fade. fade. Yeah, so you for, don't want to go there if you don't have to. For a 75-year-old, um, let me ask you this. A lot of seniors, matter of fact, some of my best partners, obviously, seniors, would you say, eh, go with a fatter grip or no? It depends on hand size again and what you Yeah, have. I would do on hand size or maybe try one instead of doing a whole set. Okay. You know, and incurring the expense of saying I don't like him or I don't hit the ball great. Right. You know, try it on whatever club you want, your driver or a five iron or seven iron or something like that. 
and they're easy enough to rip off and put new ones back on. So you're it's not, not in a for a big investment if you do okay. one at a time. And you do it here, uh, is that correct? You can do it you right here. There? Yeah, okay. it only takes. Uh, usually, what I do is I have someone come in. We look at a catalog. There's thousands of different kinds of grips. Right. Right. Um, so we'll get the catalog, pick something else, pick something out from the catalog, and then we'll order them. Order I'll call them. you when they come in, and I can have them done with in an hour or two. Oh, so it's the type of thing. If so, I play golf on a Wednesday. I could come back on what, Thursday or Friday, maybe they're done? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that quick. Yeah, it just depends on what's going on around here, but okay. usually um, if I call you, it means I've got time to, okay. to start doing it. And that's one of the services offered here, right? Right. The new yeah. grips. Eric, let me ask you also, unless you have more in the grips, anything else you want to say in the grips? Do you give, if someone says, I'm like Fred, I'm hopeless. Matter of <laughs> fact, most golf pros give me tennis rackets when I leave and said, Fred, take that. Can they get individual lessons here or what? Absolutely, yeah. We do okay. individual or group lessons, whatever you want. Uh, you just call the shop and let me know what you're interested in. Okay. We can do a package of you know, four or five lessons if you want to. Okay. If you're a beginner golfer. So you if a bunch of neighbors thing. wanted to get together and say, hey, Eric, could you, now, is it an hour, two hours? How, how, how does it work? Whatever you want to set up. Oh, whatever so, you want to set up. Yeah, we do, you know, half hour is the smallest amount of time we do, and then we go up to an hour or we can do, you know, two hours. Okay. But, um, Usually for an individual or two people, about 30, 45 minutes is good. Is enough? Okay. enough information to get them started and rolling. And okay. then you got to practice. So the biggest thing is you take a lesson that you should go out. Practice, practice immediately. once or twice and okay. then come back for another one. Otherwise, we're back to the, doing no. the same thing. You've got to practice. You say practice so makes I'm happy perfect. to take your money if you want me to tell you the same <laughs> thing over and over again. Okay. But take a lesson, practice, accomplish the goal that you know that's set forth in that lesson and then we go on from there. Okay. So take the lesson but then by golly get out and practice what you learned, right? Yeah, we important. have a driving range, so it's it's right down go the, over and do it. Down Eric, the road let, here. let me ask you this and I'm going a little off script here. Off season I call this my off season. I know you're working every day, you have no off season, but for guys like me, should the things we could be doing in our I mean could we be should we go down to the basement and just swing a club for fifteen minutes a day or practice but is there anything you'd recommend for people to do yeah absolutely if you have the ability to swing a golf club at home in your garage or okay. something like that go ahead and do it okay. uh, if you don't what I would do is you know great exercise is yoga oh do yoga because you keep your You're flexibility stretching. okay you know as we get older we lose flexibility which relates to swing speed so if you're not hitting the ball as far as you used to every year, we lose a couple of yards, right? Because we're not <laughs> oh, as flexible. Or, oh, I'm, I'm, know, I can attest to that. It hurts <laughs> to bend over to tie your shoes, yes, you know? Um, yes. So basically what you can do is you can, you know, grab a, a, a broomstick or something, you know, put it behind your head here, and then, you know, just, just kind of do some rotation get of your shoulders. Moving. Right? Get the hips moving. Yeah, you want to really get to your lower back um, and stretch that out really, really good. Okay. So... Any little form of exercise or just, stretching exercise, okay. you can find a ton of them on the websites, um, you know, golf exercises and, and stretching exercises. Okay. That's good so to know. So keep yourself flexible so you don't hurt yourself the first day out. Okay. Well, it's always a test in March to see what the body and clubs do, right? <laughs> and, and it's funny. It seems like I always play the best in March, and it goes downhill after that. So yeah. that tells you something. Or let me just summarize real quick. Uh, call if... And again, the phone number to call the pro shop to find out if you're open in right. this crazy weather is, again... It's 410-643-5721. Uh, and there's a recorded message on there to tell you if the golf course is open or what's going on, right? Right. Or they can go to the website, and it gives all this information, okay? Uh, they can yeah. get that. We have the rates on there, and there's a hole-in-one club. If you happen to hit a hole-in-one, there's a picture okay. of you on there. And um, there's league information. We have a lot of leagues, so we try to get that updated as, as I get the information from the is league it, officials. Since you mentioned, is it time to start signing up for leagues, or are we way ahead of the Yeah, they're just getting started. Some of them are just getting started okay, to sign so up. Okay, so February uh, and March, get yeah, on it. probably March 1st, you'll start oh, were they ready getting to play? information. More, you know, more that solid sounds good. Hey, you just made, the sun just came <laughs> out, March 1st. All right, Eric, look, first of all, thanks a million for putting up with this, all right? No problem. And uh, you'll see me a couple days a week, hopefully starting soon, all yeah. right? Uh, my name's Fred McNeil. We had hot stove golf today. Some tips from the Blue Heron Golf Pro to tell you some things to get ready and get ready to go because, folks, golf season's coming. <laughs>